Erda is the perfect anime for Guilty Pleasure Theater because it's short, it's got terrible voice acting, an absurd plot, over-the-top action, amateur CG, and it appears to be self-aware. This thing's worse than a sci-fi story in a magazine. What more could you ask for? Well, besides hentai, and believe me, my days of reviewing hilarious hentai are far from over. Look at the size of that ass. And she thinks her shit doesn't stink like everybody else's. Well, I got news for that bitch. <laughs> okay, take it easy. I'm going. Ugh. While Erda's CG animation is far from amazing by today's standards, this was animated back in 2002, which actually makes it better looking than most of the supplementary CG used in anime of its time, and ironically, this was animated by just one man, Romanoff Higa. Now fast forward to 2020 and we see that Crunchyroll is trying to pass off X-Arm, which looks like something a 10-year-old would make in Gary's Mod. So Erda, <laughs> I think it looks pretty good by comparison. The story of Erda follows Erna, a badass woman who unlocked the 2X rocket launcher GoldenEye cheat code IRL. Now I know what you're thinking, who could possibly piss someone off bad enough that they pick up not one, but two rocket launchers? It's the Nazis. Yep, Erna is fighting against Nazis in order to protect a young girl who accidentally stumbled through time into this dimension of clusterfuck. And when I say protect, I mean that in the loosest possible sense. Back off, you allied swine, or I'll kill her! Huh, then do it. Huh? Why don't I do it for you? As if you would! <laughs> Damn you, I can't believe you shot her! To further complicate things, the commanding Nazi officer is Erna's mother. Not her real mother though, but not exactly her adopted mother either. You see, Erna is a genetically modified human experiment born in a Nazi lab, and as you would expect, she's still pissed about it. While Nazi punching may be a stress-relieving pastime, it's kinda hard to extract that sweet, sweet vengeance when your opponent is both a MILF and a Nazi in an anime, so you know what that means. Uh, future, they will extract the data, then destroy me. Yeah, Mama Nazi is probably also a genetically modified badass too, but for 30 minutes, there's only but so much exposition you can expect. Thankfully, we got the bare bones here because Legend of the Galactic Heroes couldn't even pull off a plotline this twisted. Now you guys know I don't like to give spoilers in my reviews, but this is Guilty Pleasure Theater, so all of the rules are out of the window and we're just here to have fun. So the whole story revolves around Erna and Glimhild fighting against each other because uh, they have this long rivalry between them and they're also fighting over this girl. So at the end of the movie, this girl turns out to be both Erna and Glimhild because this is like a younger version of her that somehow came backwards from the future and is trying to go further back into the past. But she's actually both characters. So Erna is fighting against her mom, which is actually an alternate timeline version of herself. And Glimhild raised Erna, which is also an alternate timeline version of herself. And they're both going to war with each other to protect a character that eventually becomes both of them. <laughs> I would say you can't make this stuff up, but clearly Romanov he did, and he's got a pretty creative imagination, I'll just say that. Although Erda may have a convoluted time travel story and poorly aged CG animation, its redemption lies in its creativity, and in my opinion, it's totally redeemed in that, because this is a pretty fun anime to watch. Romanov must have had a blast putting this together, bending physics to choreograph some of the most ridiculous fights I've seen in a while. My recommendation is to find a good quality dubbed version of this, Go make some popcorn and share this spectacular train wreck with your friends. Personally, I like Romanov style, so I did a little bit of investigating to see if I could dig up some more. I recommend checking out his other apparently solo animation venture, Cat Blue Dynamite. It follows a cat woman who can shoot guns with her tail and communicate with ghosts as she battles it out with her other cat woman rival over a mysterious Frank Sinatra cassette tape. It's got comedic character interaction and a fair bit of jazz inspiration as well. Like Erda, this is also under one hour long and has an entertaining English dub. Let's get this over with. 
Alicia and I are going to be busy tonight, if you know what I mean. I couldn't partner with a guy fucking my own sweet sister. It was a serious issue. Come out and show yourselves! I'm gonna kill all you motherfuckers! Calm down, James Brown. Nice rhyme, oh brother of mine. You believe that shit? Blue the cat? She talks with spirits and shit? Seems to me, the truth is, she is just a year-round Halloween bitch witch. What are you doing? Torture. Tank SWAT-01 is a spin-off of Shiro Masamune's Dominion manga. I'm not sure if this is actually a licensed product or just a doujin, because this was the work of Studio Doga, but I can't find any evidence of the contrary that this was also a one-man animation project. Either way, I felt that it lacked Romanov's unique flair, which left it, in my opinion, to be a bland military CG anime, but maybe you'll enjoy it if you've ever read Dominion or seen the Dominion Tank Police anime, because I haven't. Yutoshi no Muko is Romanov's last known role in anime, and from what I gather, this is the third installment of the previously airing series of shorts starring a cute dog and his antics with his owner. It's not like his other works though, but it is cute and maybe you'll have fun sharing this with your kids. I watched an episode and, you know, it was, was alright. The impression I get from Romanov is that he is a diamond in the rough, and although he will never see this, I hope he hasn't given up on making these enjoyable little animations. I'm sure they're time consuming and probably weren't profitable, but the impression that I got from him is that he is an artist who mostly did it because he enjoyed doing it, and I also hope that he continued because I think he did pretty good work for 2002 in, in full CG animation, and I can only imagine what his skills would be like now if he kept doing it. And also, you can actually market this sort of thing on Kickstarter, so hopefully he hasn't thrown in the towel yet and has more animations up his sleeve. Thank you all for watching this episode of Guilty Pleasure Theater. If you enjoyed it, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I'd also appreciate it if you could share this video, because I really want to shine a bigger spotlight on Romanov and his works. I stream this, and my viewers watched it alongside with me and they said Bob this is actually a good anime we're really we're rolling over here we're laughing our asses off we're having fun with this so I think there's a lot more people who would also enjoy this and I really want to spread the word because it is something that I feel is underrated so if you'd like to see more videos like this check out my guilty pleasure theater playlist you can find it on my channel and probably also linked in the end of the video here have an awesome day everybody